Hello Year 4, welcome to your fourth session of science in your States of Matter uh, unit of work. We're going to be um, setting up another investigation today, but this week science is going to be a little bit different. You're going to have to have two sort of shorter sessions, so we're going to do one today on Monday, and then you're going to need to come back on either Wednesday or Thursday this week to um, have a look at your investigation that you've set up and record your results. So let's get started. We are going to be thinking about um, patterns again this week and we're going to be thinking about patterns um, in relation to freezing. Last week we looked at um, melting and we did a comparative test to find out which was the best chocolate for um, creating a chocolate chair. So well done if you had a good go at that. I saw some fantastic um, pictures and videos and things that you sent in um, onto our year four email. So thank you for sharing your learning with us. It's really lovely um, to see it. So we're going to be thinking about freezing in a little bit more um, this week so let's get going before we um, get started though it's always a good idea to go back a few weeks and have a little bit of a recap and the very first week we started this unit we um, learned about the three different states of matter about solids liquids and gases so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go and do a, um, a little quiz for me a little sorting activity you'll find the link to access it in the Google Drive in the science link document but I'm just going to take you over there now so you can see what it looks like it is on a website called word wall and and all you need to do is you need to press the start button and you just need to drag over the um, statements or the pictures that you think go with the solids, liquids and gases. So for example, if I picked this picture up here, would this be a solid, would this be a liquid, would this be a gas? So you've got some images and you've got some statements. Once you've put them all in to the correct boxes, you can submit your answers here and it will mark it for you. It's fantastic. If you want to make it big screen, then you just click on there and you can see the um, words a little more clearly. So have a good go at that. Um, when you've done that, when you've marked it, come back and we will um, get on with the rest of the lesson. So hopefully you, you did a good job. If not, then you could always go back and try it again. Um, don't worry too much. It's just trying to recall that information about solids, liquids and gases that we already know. So a big question for you to get you thinking, uh, and it's a what if question. So what if water couldn't freeze? What would be the problems, do you think, if water couldn't freeze? Hmm, I wonder. Maybe pause now, take some time to have a think, have a chat to a family member if you've got a family member there. If you haven't got a family member there, then maybe you just want to jot some things down on either a whiteboard or a scrap of paper. Um, there's nothing for you to record officially. It's just to get you thinking about what might happen if water couldn't freeze. Um, it could be a bit difficult, couldn't it, if water couldn't freeze? Um, I definitely know that in the summer that we wouldn't have um, any nice ice cubes to put in our drinks to uh, keep us nice and cool. But there's also another problem if waters don't if water didn't freeze because what would happen to the North Pole and the South Pole and the polar ice caps? What would happen there? I wonder. What would happen to snow? Would it always stay here if it? Mm. Would we even get snow if water couldn't freeze? Who knows? There are lots of um, things that would make you start thinking then about water. Water is a really special, unique substance that we've got. Um, and we're really lucky that we've got it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, what happens when a liquid does actually freeze? What is happening? So I do want you to record something here. I want you to answer this question. So it's just a, a couple of sentences, a short paragraph to explain what happens when a liquid freezes. Now you might want some of these words here in this red box to help you with that. We've got liquid, solid, opposite, cold and melting, freezing point change and zero degrees centigrade. So what does actually happen when a liquid freezes? Um, have a little go, write yourself a little uh, sentence or two um, and then come back and join me and we will get moving on. So, if we just think back to when we did the ice cube investigation a couple of weeks ago when you were looking at the uh, melting times um, of ice or um, you were looking at um, if ice melted differently in different types of water, different amounts of water, different places in the house. Um, 
What was the state of water at the start of your investigation? Well, we know, don't we, that if we started off with an ice cube um, and we think about our properties of our states of matter, we know that that was solid, um, it was hard, we couldn't bend it or it didn't fill the space of the container. Um, so at the start, the water was in a solid state. But by the end of the investigation, hopefully, most of your water had changed from a solid state in the ice cube and had moved into um, a liquid state. So it had changed from a solid into a liquid at the end. Um, and it changes because it melts. So it warms up, it gets warmer, and the particles inside they start to be move around a bit more get be a bit more freer and they turn into this liquid um, and it's called it's called melting um, and we know that the opposite of melting is freezing so that's what we're going to look at today we're going to um, have a, a look at, at some uh, freezing today so a couple of questions here for you to think about does everything freeze i wonder what would happen if you put a pair of your socks in the freezer now please don't do it unless you've got your parents permission but it might be interesting to see what would happen if you put some different objects into the freezer well, we know in our freezer normally we've got vegetables and maybe some fruit and you know some ice creams and things um but i'm thinking about things like maybe socks what would happen if you put a whole banana in the fridge? Would that freeze? Um, what might happen if you put one of your, you, you know, a toy brick, a Lego brick or a pencil? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you can get permission to try and put some of these different objects into the freezer to see if they do actually freeze. But what we want to think about today is we're going to be thinking about this question here. And we're going to be thinking about whether all liquids freeze. Now, one day, if we can come up with an investigation, um, how could we answer that question? We know already, don't we, that water freezes because that's how we get ice cubes. And we know that in the summer, if we mix some squash with some water and we pop it into the freezer in an ice lolly mold or some orange juice or something like that, we know that that freezes. So we do know that some liquids do freeze. But I'm wondering about liquids that we wouldn't normally put into the freezer. Um, things like bubble bath or fabric softener or... Um, uh, golden syrup or maple syrup like that you put on your pancakes or what about milk does milk freeze um oh, i don't know who knows um so that's going to be the question this week for us to investigate do all liquids freeze and um i've already kind of started to think about this and i'm going to investigate these liquids here i found these around the house so just some household liquids you do need to ask your parents permission before you go um, around the house getting some uh, liquids because some liquids might be dangerous. So I don't want you to go off and do this on your own. I do want you to think about the liquids that you can use um, and make sure that they're safe because in science we always need to, to be safe. And while you're setting up your investigation, it would be lovely if you have some um, some adult there to, to support you and to supervise because I don't want anyone to get hurt. Um, so we're going to sort of investigate if liquids freeze. Now, you, I want you to select between four and seven liquids, household liquids. We know water freezes, so we don't want to do that. We know that squash freezes, so we don't do that. We know that orange juice freezes. So things that we know already that would freeze, um, maybe we could use one of those as a control. So maybe some water because we know that definitely freezes. And if that does freeze in, as part of our investigation, we know our investigation has worked well. Um, but I'm not sure whether all liquids do freeze. I mean, you wouldn't normally put your fabric softener in the freezer, would you? You wouldn't normally put honey in the freezer. Or vinegar. What about vinegar? I wonder if vinegar freezes. Hmm. So what I want you to do is I would just want you to set up a very simple investigation this week. And you can see here that you could use um, an ice cube tray. Now, obviously, this is one that's been done in school. So there's three different groups here. And it looks like they've, um, they're have they looking at investigating some um, different liquids. Maybe washing up liquid. I wonder if that freezes. Um, 
so uh, you could use an ice cube tray if you've got one if you haven't got one that you can't use for the investigation I've just got some little um, little like beakers little plastic beakers and I've written on there olive oil because I'm going to do olive oil and that's going to go in there so I'm going to pop my um, liquids in there maybe you know just um, a third full if we're thinking about our fractions and then I'm going to pop these inside a like um, a lunch box or a takeaway tub and then I'm going to tuck them into the freezer just to see if they actually freeze so I've got all mine in front of me here so I'm going to have a go I'm going to do some fabric softener I'm just going to pour a little bit can you see just a little bit into the bottom of my pot um, make sure the lid's on tightly make sure that you have got parents permission to do these things um, the next one I'm going to test is um, some olive oil so I've got my olive oil bottle here raided the kitchen Mr Lancaster will not be very happy with me I'll be wondering where all these things have gone so just a little bit of olive oil now this bit's important if it's a fair test we want to try and make sure that the amounts that we've got in each one are about the same that looks about the same to me um, you could measure them out if you wanted to um, but I'm just guessing the next thing I'm going to do is a, a bit of bubble bath so ooh, I've got my bubble bath here I'm going to pour it in ooh, ooh, that's my oh that's very thick ooh. right make sure I've got the lid back on that safely just going to check it against my first one that I did my fabric softener yep yeah, looks about the same that one was much thicker than the other two and then for my final one I'm going to do some honey this is brand new honey Mr Lancaster is not going to be pleased um I'm going to have to take the the container off it the lid off it oh here we go it's got one of those paper lids on I'm going to squeeze some honey. This is quite thick as well. The thickness of liquid is called its viscosity. Um, and I'm going to squeeze a bit of honey in. I'm going to let it settle because as it settles, it kind of fills up. Um, so there are my four. I've got my four different liquids. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them in the freezer. And I'm going to forget about them until Wednesday or Thursday. However, what I do need to do before I put them in is I do need, I'm going to pop over to the Google Drive. Um, I do need to, where's the science? Here it is. Um, do some predictions. Okay, so there is this little sheet for you in the Google Drive. So um, your liquid, you're going to describe it. You're going to describe it, its colour, its texture and its smell. And what I mean by texture is about that viscosity or you could test it by sticking your fingers in it. We know that honey is likely to be a bit more sticky than washing up liquid. Olive oil flows a little bit more. So popping some descriptions in there and then just a prediction. Will it freeze? Yes or no? So just a cross or a tick. Will it freeze? What do we think? I'm not convinced. I'm gonna. Um, I'm not convinced that fabric softener is going to freeze. So I'd write on here, um, fabric softener. You could write what it is. It is um, light blue in colour, texture. It's um, very runny, and it's, it smells like flowers. It smells lovely. It smells like flowers. Um, and I'm gonna think. I'm gonna put a cross here because I don't think it will freeze. I don't think it will freeze at all. Um, so that's what you need to do. Then you're going to pop it into the freezer. Make sure you've got it inside another container so it doesn't spill on anything. And, and make sure you check first before you do that, please. Um, and then you're going to come back Tuesday, uh, sorry, Wednesday or Thursday to um, take them out uh, and have a little look. So I'll do that as well. I'll pop these in my freezer now and um, I'll have a look at, at them again on uh, Tuesday evening. And I'll make you another video so you can see what happened um, in my investigation if you wanted to have a look at that but what I do want you to have a think about while you're waiting for those things to freeze is I want you to go off and I want you to do a little bit of research and I want you to research not the freezing points but I want you to research the melting points of some everyday materials some materials that we would use every day um, and you're going to do this using something called secondary sources and um, what I mean by secondary sources is I mean that you're going to either look in a book 
or you're gonna ask an expert if you know one, or you are going to do some research on the internet, which is what I guess lots of you will probably do. Um, and this is a really useful working scientifically skill here that we're, we're gonna be working on, thinking about those secondary sources. And the everyday materials that I want you to research are rubber, that car tires are made out of, steel, leather, gold, candle wax and sugar okay so there are six everyday materials there and this is the fun bit you get to record your findings your research however you want to um so that might be a powerpoint it might be an information leaflet we've written loads of those in english over the last year you might want to do um like we made our hurricane posters you might want to do it like that you um, in powerpoint you might want to do um if you're RT, you might want to do a collage to show me um you can build it i don't mind however you want to do it but it will be lovely to see some of your secondary research on the melting points of those materials i'm looking forward to seeing you again on wednesday or thursday when um i'll go through what happened with my four liquids um, and then I'm and then you're going to record what happened with yours. So have fun um, If you don't manage to do the investigation, that's absolutely fine But I would love you to do the research, please and I will see you back in a couple of days time. Bye